Well, our goal is to get the TI-84 Plus to display a scatter plot of our simple salary versus years of experience data. Then construct a regression model for that same data and then finally display the regression line on top of the scatter plot so that we might see how it compares. So to do that, we typically first enter in the data by going to the stat menu, selecting edit. Uh, but there's 30 pairs of data points and data entry isn't my favorite thing. So I'm not going to make you watch me enter the data into the calculator. I've already done that off screen. So we've got two columns of data. The first column represents the years uh, in, of uh, employment and the second column represents annual salary. If we wanted to just display a scatter plot of that data, we would all we'd need to do is go to second stat plot. We're going to want to go to the first plot trace, plot one. Make sure it is on, so we'll select it. It is on. And then the scatter plot is the icon that looks like a set of points. Um, plotted on a pair of XY axes. The X list or the independent variable is going to be the years of experience, so that's L1, and we'll, we'll set the um, Y list uh, or the Y coordinate to be the annual salary, which is stored in the Y or the L2 uh, column of the, the um, list editor. So if your calculator isn't currently set to those two values, um, you'd want to change that by clicking on second one for L1 or second two for L2 and put them in the appropriate places. I'm keeping a square symbol as a mark and I'm keeping the uh, color of this graph blue because this emulator and my calculator can graph them in, in colors. So if I wanted to display that, we'd um, uh, go and simplest thing is just to click on the zoom button and scroll down to zoom stat and that will fit the uh, window to hold the, the data that uh, appears in our data set. So I've hit enter on that and brings us to a graph of our scatter plot. So now we'd like to compute a regression model to fit that data. And the way to do that is to go back to the stat menu, select calc, and scroll down to linear regression, AX plus B. Hit enter on that. And then we need to tell it that we would like the um, X data to contain the first list, list one, second one to get list one, and the Y data to contain the um, annual salary data, that's in list two, so second two. There is no frequency list, and I, but I would like to store the regression equation somewhere. And so we'll go to vars, y vars, and select function, and we can just choose y1. And then we should be able to calculate and it gives us uh, a regression equation, y equals ax plus b, and then tells us what the regression parameters are. So now let's go back to our graph. We can see that that regression line is displayed on top of our data, and it appears to be a reasonably good fit. Well, it's also possible to cause MATLAB to perform linear regression. One of the convenient things about MATLAB, one of the many convenient things about MATLAB, is its ability to pull data into its own environment from a wide variety of sources. And this saves you from having to do manual data entry work yourself in many cases. So the data set for the salary versus years of service uh, example came from a user's uh, repository on the Kaggle.com website. 
and they provided it in a, a CSV file, basically a spreadsheet file. So we're, rather than copying the data out from that, that file manually, we will just read it directly into MATLAB. And we're going to read it into a MATLAB data structure called a table. The way we can do that is with the read table command. And the read table command accepts the name of the file name, the name of the file for, that contains our data. In this case, it's salarydata.csv. And that, that CSV file will be available in the GitHub repository for this, this uh, technological companion. And uh, then we also specify an option. We tell it we're going to read, we're not going to read any variable names from that CSV file. And that's because there just aren't any. There's no column headers specified in that file. We'll set those variable names on the very next line. So if I run that command, not very much is going to appear to happen yet. Although we can see in the workspace a, a 30 by 2 table, so a two column by 30 row table named data has been created. And then I'm going to add meaningful column header variable names to that table using um, the variable names properties of data. So by typing data.properties.variablenames equal to this uh, celery of uh, the two strings, years of experience and salary. And those just become the names of those two columns. So if I run that, we'll actually display an excerpt of our data set where we can in fact see that the first column is labeled years of experience and the second column is labeled salary. And we can access those numerical values from that table using those names. So the next thing that we'd like to do is build the regression model. And MATLAB has a built-in function for creating regression models. There's really not a whole lot that we have to do in order to make that happen. So I'm going to use the FITLM, it stands for FIT Linear Model function. And I'm going to apply it to the two variables, years of experience, the X variable, and, and, or the Y variable rather, and then salary. And I access those from the data table by typing data years of experience, comma, data, salary. And that model is going to be stored in a MATLAB object called, uh, the, the, the variable name for it is just going to be model MDL. All right, so if I run that, it summarizes, the output area summarizes what that model provides us. It gives us a linear regression model that uh, has a constant offset plus something that is proportional to my uh, independent variable of the years of experience. And then it gives me the coefficients for that model. So the, the uh, constant coefficient is 25,792 and the slope uh, of, the, of the line is 9,450. It also gives us some of our summary statistics, um, some of our um, error metrics, like some of the errors, and most importantly, down below, we've got our R squared coefficient of 0.957. So it tells us that the model fits the data reasonably well. So now what we'd like to do is take that model and extract some predictions from it and then plot those predictions on top of just a scatter plot of the original data set. So MATLAB's predict function accepts our model as one of its inputs and then a vector of x values that we want to generate predictions from. So we want to generate corresponding y values for those x values. So we create a, a vector of x values just ranging from 0 through 12 there's going to be a hundred of them evenly spaced. And those just represent various possible years of experience we might be interested in. So if I run that, it gives me a set of x values that I can plug into the predict function. And once I've done that, it gives me a set of y values basically that um, 
um, I can plot to, against those x values. And I'm going to do that using the plot command. In fact, I'm going to use the plot command to plot two things. A scatter plot of the x and y data, the years of experience, and the annual salary. And those are going to be uh, just individual points plotted with an open circle. So that's what these three inputs here do inside of that plot command. And then in the same plot window, I will plot the y predictions that I just computed using MATLAB's predict function against this range of x values. So these are predicted salaries plotted against a range, an evenly spaced range of years of experience. And I'm just going to place, label, after that I run that plot command by stepping through it, I'll place an x and y label on the graph that represent the years of experience and the salary that we are trying to relate. And that just makes the graph a little bit more readable. Once I've done that, I can blow up the plot window so that you can see it on your video a little bit better. And we can see that we've got a pretty good scatter plot of our data together with the linear model uh, superimposed on it. And it looks like a pretty similar graph to what we were getting out of the calculator. Again, the nice uh, features here are that we are able to label and format the graph. If I wanted to save it into some graphics format, such as a um, encapsulated postscript or a PNG, I could just give it its own file name and save it someplace in my directory structure, and then import that graphic in some document that maybe I'm, I'm writing. Okay. So both MATLAB and the TI calculator are totally capable of performing these, these uh, regression models on data and then visualizing them. And so we've just seen one example of how to do that.